Hello, Lizzie. Hello. Hello, Katie. It's lovely to talk to you. And you. And thank you for taking part in the Lockdown Literary Festival. Um, just so everybody knows who, who both of us are. Um, I'm Katie Charles and I'm the uh, Chief Executive at Chawton House. And Lizzie? I'm Lizzie Dunford and I am the Director of Jane Austen House Museum. Thank you very much. We are, we thought we'd have a bit of a, a chat as the two directors uh, in Chawton at the moment and we are spending these three days bringing um, not just the literature, women's literature and the, and the literature of Jane Austen to, to a, a, a huge audience across the world, but also Chawton Village, which is where we've both got the, the kind of honour and pleasure um, of working, running both of the, the, two, the two literary houses uh, in the village. And it is, it's very unusual to find, to find that, that the, the two of the biggest uh, entities in a place are both historic houses and uh, a museum. So we're in a very lucky, uh, a very lucky position. Now I've been at Chawton House for about a year, just over a year, but you've been at Jane Austen's house for a little bit less time. Yes, it's it. just over exactly a month. So I started on the 14th of April. So it's gone very fast, but has, and it's been a very full first four weeks. Um, but it's still, it's. I think there's nothing can take away for it. It's such a joy and a privilege to be part of the Jane Austen world and to be so deeply connected with a place that was so important to her that even in a, I think actually something that especially in a time of crisis, it still, it still makes it a real privilege and responsibility. But Chawton is so gorgeous, and we've been such a beautiful spring, uh, and I'm very lucky to live in Alton. Uh, so I can on my bike and I can cycle through lanes full of hawthorn blossom and elderflowers just coming out and past thatch cottages. And it's really rather a treat, actually, especially with the roads being quiet. I suspect it might be rather different. There's large lorries thundering past me. on. <laughs> yeah, it's beautiful. It's been a, it's been a really interesting. I'm going to stick with interesting. It's been an interesting start. Yeah. Probably the most certainly has. I think I said to you when you started, what a time to start. Mm. Um, but yeah, and you, you're right, Chawton is very much like it. There's a, some, some element of stepping back in time. Um, yeah. I think with the with the village and with um, the, that the kind of the evocative nature of, of walking into both houses um, is you're stepping, you feel you're stepping into something very special. But yeah, stepping back in time um, a little mm. bit, but in a, in a wholly good way as well. Um, mm. You, where, where did you come from before you were at Jane Austen's house? So I have a background in um, conservation and restoration, really. That's what my undergraduate and my master's degree is in. So really looking at decorative art and social, social history objects. So restoring and conserving and preserving them. And from that, I just got placements while I was at university. And then I was lucky enough to work for the National Trust for, for nearly eight years in various different places. I started off at the home of another great Eliza of literature. I was at George Bernard Shaw's house, which is where it ah. was created from the revolving writing hut at the bottom. So I was there for a long time. And with that, I looked after I looked after the collections and the conservation and did research into how the conservate and the collections connected to Shaw's work and his playwriting and his life, which was charming, as well as looking after events and retail sides. It was tiny. There was only a couple of the staff. So got a real chance to do all sorts of different things. <laughs> an outside property whereas I was uh, looked after the visitor experience which is really different and I missed my objects I did miss objects. <laughs> the landscape is beautiful but I'm 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 rather more at home indoors with things rather than <laughs> landscape um and then I was again my last my last job at the trust I looked after two uh, beautiful properties over in Essex so I had a Tudor Tudor merchant's house which was beautiful and a tithe barn that was uh, had bits of it that were a thousand years old uh, so that was really lovely um, and looking after those. And again, a fascinating collection and fascinating story. So uh, looking after all the different aspects of those from sort of the commercial side, as well as making sure. And I think that's the key, but you know, this, but the key thing of balancing beautiful historic houses like this, you know, it, it's bringing out their stories, but not exploiting them and conserving, preserving them. That, and it's that really beautiful balance between access and conservation and storytelling. Um, something I find fascinating um, and then just immediately prior to being to coming to Jane Austen I was at a, again a lovely place called the Chilton Open Air Museum which it, it rescues historic buildings from all over the Chilterns and they rebuild it and it's extraordinary it's a really extraordinary place and the real experimental archaeology that's done there the staff were really inspiring particularly the buildings team and the farm team who 
team look after rare breeds from the area and do all sorts of hedge laying and authentic things and it was fantastic and so yeah I was the ops manager there so looking after again commercial aspects and a bit of curatorial and conservation and a little a little bit of everything um <laughs> and then I ended up here I think a little bit of everything is a fantastic grounding in being a, a director <laughs> or a chief executive of, of either of the houses yes yeah. but yes you do need to you need to know a little bit about a lot um, but be able to kind of hold the whole the, the, the whole thing together and and just have confidence in the team who do know a lot about yes. their particular area. Um, yeah. And I think we're both very lucky that we've got teams that um, are hugely knowledgeable about, mm. about their different areas. Yeah, really lucky. It's a real privilege to be working with a knowledgeable team. That's really exciting. Fabulous. Um, so why, why Jane Austen's house? Why Jane Austen? Well, afraid of being an epic nerd, but I know this is a context in which I very much can be. Um, I was really quite young when the 1995 production came out, but I just watched it, as to be fair, most of the nation did, with absolute awe and obsession, really, and everything from the costumes to the manners to that exquisite, just the soundtrack is so evocative, and the embroidery thread, and I loved it. And my mum then bought me the book, for, I think it was my birthday that year. And I read it so many times, so many times, all through my teenage years. And I read Emma, Northanger Abbey, uh, Mansfield Park, I threw them all. We studied it at GCSE. And okay. I really, particularly, not Pride and Precious, we did the Three Sisters um, mm. letter writing. So we looked at some of the, the teenage writings. And just my favorite author. So, absolutely my favorite author. And I, you know, sort of, fantastic uh, texts around like we you know what matters in Jane Austen um, and really looking at that and the more I reread which I did I know I'm not alone in our audience of really seeing in in Pride and Prejudice in particular even though it's possibly not the, the you know Emma's a masterpiece so you know they're all masterpieces so it's really difficult to say but particularly in Pride and Prejudice there's something so deeply comforting there's something so evocative about it. And I know I'm not alone that, that that world of Jane Austen is something to retreat into. But as I reread and as I reread it, there's a sense of it's not just comfort. It's not just sugarcoating. And there is somebody who, who is deeply insightful, deeply witty, and above all, just really, really smart. And I think it's so unusual, uh, and it's not always the same to be have to have a writer that you consume where you you take aside you know the romance and you take aside the perceptions of wealth Jane Austen is never afraid to lord and celebrate intellect and in fact she is very you know she goes for anyone who is silly and stupid and I think that as slightly, slightly nerdy uh you know in, introverted very bookish young woman to have somebody who holds up and really praises and her characters are actually their wealth is not the important thing and they're not all wealthy it is the fact that they are intelligent the fact that they are that they are smart and I think Jane Austen is really quite unusual in that that she she creates these really I know it's a very very strong cliche of strong female characters but she does <laughs> I think that's what's so big. So uh, that's why Jane Austen. I, I just think she's one of the most remarkable writers that ever lived. And I think the more I read and reread her novels, and I have had the privilege at the moment, I am working through and rereading all of them. Um, just, just finished Mansfield Park again. And the more I am struck by how modern they are, how free, how revolutionary, I, I just think they're extraordinary. And yeah, that's why I did not. I will stop there because I could go on and on and on. But I think, <laughs> I think if is... anybody is allowed to, then the director of Jane Austen <laughs> is allowed. Yes, yes, um, <laughs> yes. So I really, I really, very, very feel very strongly about Jane Austen, and to have, to be able to, I, lo I love writers' houses. I think they're incredibly important uh, to the cultural landscape. Um, I've worked in writers' houses, visitors a lot, and to have the, just unutterable privilege to be able to work and bring what I have learned over you know, whatever limited or extent that is years of working in museums to bring that to Jane Austen's house is 
And I, I, Extraordinary. <laughs> I still can't believe it. Pandemic or not, it's still amazing. It's still amazing. I think there is definitely something I've worked in um, in, a, in quite different, I guess it's fairly different museums to you because I worked pre uh, predominantly in some of the London nationals, so British yeah. Museum and Natural History Museum, Imperial War Museums. So um, it's, it, it is, a, there are similar uh, disciplines and if you like the collection is at the heart of everything we do at Chawton House the story of of course of Chawton House and the estates and Jane Austen's role in that and the, but the collection is you're right whatever whatever mm. it is you're doing whether it is something commercial or whether it is your displays or how the house is presented or your research clearly the collection is always at the heart of that it has to always come back to to the collection um, but I do think there's something different about writers' houses or about houses where people have lived in, as opposed to um, a kind of a museum which was built to, to hold a collection or, or where a building was changed to hold a collection. Um, and you get a very different feeling. I always think um, that about Chawton House specifically, when people come in and they say it feels like stepping into someone's home, and that's really the, the the kind of the warmth of the welcome that we want to that we want to have. And you don't want to lose that that that's special um, about 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 a literary house. I do think there's something different being a director of a literary house than than another. I think so. Person. I do agree, and I think there's also sort of from going really back to a sort of very sort of museological theory point of view. Mm -hmm. I know we do have display cases and I you do you know you do as well but you lose that sort of sense of taking an object out of its space and out of its time and putting it in a glass case you yeah. have that you know you have the contextual you can look at the different things people's objects that are that are associated together and the way that they then inspired and it's an interior and I think it's it's a much more relatable to experience than a sort of a glass case museum um it's more distinct from your own being in an environment that is similar to yours you know there's the sofa and there's the table and from this came this it's a very different I think it's much more uh it's much more emotive it's much more firsthand rather than something and I, I love you know, glass cases it's amazing I've never got a you know museums <laughs> they have their place they have their place and I think there's something amazing about going and you know peering through the glass at something that amazing treasures but at the same time there's something that's so deeply touching about going into into kitchens I think it's that immersiveness, yeah. isn't it? It's about yeah. being in the same space. Yeah. Um, and you, you were saying about rereading some of Austin's um, work. <laughs> I was writing uh, something at the weekend about landscape um, and Mans the the, the uh, description of landscapes in Mansfield Park, oh, which is, gosh. is, is fascinating. It's, it's beautifully written, yeah. but it's also sort of so in terms of social history is really interesting. Um, yes. And if you look at how she describes different yeah. sorts of landscape in Mansfield Park, and then you find out what her brother was doing at the time with yeah. the landscape at Chawton, that's the point, you know, 1813, where he's reviewing yeah. the gardens, he yeah. starts his plans <laughs> to, move, <laughs> to move the gardens from the yeah. front to the back of Chawton House. Yeah. Um, you, you, you then, I think, and that's the, the joy of, of the two houses um, working kind of well together, is that you've got that then that contextual story about her family Absolutely. and her experiences um which for for us is fascinating because then you can start to pick some of those threads together and say yeah. well yes yeah, she was talking about um about creating different sorts of landscapes right at the point where she writes edward is as comfortable as a, a hampshire gent he talks of making a new garden it's um and i think that that is there's something very special about that and we're, we're both very lucky to to, oh, to have yes. that material to work with and i think it's very interesting looking at the village as a whole um and particularly uh, yes i said i, I finished I finished rereading mansfield park at last mm -hmm. moment, and before that was emma I, to be honest, I haven't bothered reading pride and prejudice again because i've read it so many times i know <laughs> Um, rereading Emma and I think that was very interesting reading that at the same time as sort of really starting to discover Chawton and actually seeing very much that's a novel for me that's very much a novel that's a portrait of a village and having grown up in villages lived in villages and knowing what village life is like um, I do slightly think and again you know the sub almost the story between Emma and Knightley is almost a subtext to this actual relationship and portrait of all these different people. And I think it's really charming, although it's entirely speculative, but I do love walking to Chawton and going, 
wonder who lived there and I wonder who lived there and that, you know was that Mrs Bates was there a real Mrs Bates who lived in there and it's, pure, it's purely for my own enjoyment but I think that's seeing seeing that physical context that she walked through and walked past every day and the experience of landscape which is so central to the romantic era the time in which she was writing and so centered in and I think um again that you talking about Mansfield Park there's one particular bit where she's she's standing with Henry Crawford looking out at this looking out at the seascape and the way you know, whenever I last read it I didn't take it in it's astonishing <laughs> writing in these little bits that it come in between skewering overblown personalities <laughs> What is it? Landscape writing that almost comes out of nowhere um, is just extraordinary. And we're really lucky in Shorten and in Hampshire uh, to be able to see the things that that inspired that and to be able to, um, you know, really appreciate her love, her love of nature, which is it's subtle. It's not there in all the novels, but I think the way they so closely follow a plotted year and the turn of the year and turn of the seasons, I think there's a very strong you know, strong message in them about that closeness of nature and uh, which is different with you know that that disparity from time which actually I think at the moment <laughs> it's been more I think it's been one of the, actually seeing that turn people are a lot more engaged with the seasons and the year this year which yes is, that's very true and very you get similar, <laughs> you get that similar um like kind of feeling of understanding the influence if you go to Godmersham in Kent as well yes. um because you drive you you know you drive up the driveway there and you can see and I'm sure this is terribly controversial but but from my point of view I, I see some of the geography of Pemberley and the yeah. geography of Pride and Prejudice, Pride and Prejudice at Godmersham so you've started at a very odd time for the yes. world <laughs> <laughs> do you how do you think that's um, affected what you what the role of a, of a kind of literary house is or a, a, a something like the two houses that we have because I think for me certainly um, as the it was all very quick the lockdown was very quick there was a mm. kind of practicalities about how do you you know how do you close the house down in terms of the visitors but keep Chawton House as a as an entity open for the public and how do we do that very quickly so there's a lot of kind of practical questions but I was driven by a, a kind of a belief that it's really at a time like this that people need arts and culture more um, because it, it, whether it is like this festival is for entertainment and escapism um, and you know fairly unapologetic in that um, but people do also find solace in creativity and in literature um, I know I've read far more since um, the lockdown started possibly because I've not got the hour commute either side um but yeah. it's um it, to me it, it it was very important that we kept going in some way um and that we so the festival was part of that yeah. um so how do you has it have you had the same sort of i don't know existential crisis <laughs> lockdown it has been yeah it's been really tricky but i think in some ways it's really promoted different ways of working as you say and i think um, I know that if I was starting at this time normally, this would be the first four weeks would be really getting to know my team, getting to know the staff, getting to know the volunteers, spending some time out with you guys at Chawton House. Yeah. There'd be a lot of tea and cake being drunk. Um, I mean, there's that anyway at the moment. There's that anyway, but yeah, there'd be more of that, more of that. I'm really getting into the nits and gritty of the, you know, the social dynamics of a team. I have been able to do, I've been able to do very little of that. Um, but instead, I have been having, you know, strategic meetings, really thinking long term and short term and things that possibly otherwise you don't really start when you're new in a job because you're needing to get everybody and get the nuts and bolts. No, you know, I always think I haven't, you know, the first week you're getting to know where you hang the coat and where to put your lunch. No, it, it was straight into what do we do? How do we keep going? How? And, you know, I'm going to be really blunt about how to survive and how to survive and it is it is looking at it and looking at it at that level and I think the online engagement I think particularly for both of our houses so many of our audience and all the people can't visit us anyway we have a large online audience and actually or an overseas audience really taking the time to think about how to engage what is the what what do we do how do we keep prolonging conversations 
how do we ensure that we are at the heart of people's minds when they're thinking about Jane Austen? That's a really, that's a really big thing. Um, so yeah, it has been, it has forced different ways of working, but I don't think that's a bad thing. I think it's an exciting thing. And um, it's been a time to pause, not necessarily to stop. I think it's a time to pause. And it's been time to actually, we everyone, museums have been talking for years about improving online engagement. It's something that's been a really big part of the sector for a long time. And those big places that have loads of staff and can afford to have an entire digital wing have been able to do it. Whereas smaller organizations, we just, and but now it's the only thing we can do. Mm. Um, and that's really and exciting, uh, yeah. actually. I think uh, one of the things that's really um, that's that's been remarkable about our team um, at Chorlton, and I mean it's the team because you know you can come up with ideas um, as the chief executive or director, but you do, you, I, you might not know, as I said, you might not know the whole kind of practicalities mm -hmm. and implications of doing them. So I can say let's do a, a lockdown literary festival, um, but I think the agility and creativity to be able to go, okay, let's see how this works. Um, and we've done it, you know, we've we've done it all in house um, beyond making some sort of tiny changes to our websites, um, but nothing kind of enormous. And I think being able to to sort of pull together, what do we all know um, of the team that's that the, that we have at the house at the moment, and what are all of our kind of strengths? And everybody's view is equally important. And I think that's how we've managed to be so. Um, Kind of, I think for me, I'm enormously proud of how agile um, they've they've all been, and and also that we've tested each idea. So we've gone, well, could we do? We've done so this. I feel I always feel bad saying this when we've got a, a kind of viewers from North America, but we've been doing for the last kind of six weeks or so. We've been doing these periodic afternoon tea deliveries and collections, and the afternoon yeah, tea, they've been lovely. Kitchen tea room. And I feel very bad talking about this because. There's a, there's a radius of about 15 miles around Jordan where you can get to access them until today, where we've just yeah. put um, we put cakes uh, and, and uh, scones online for collection and for and for postal delivery, but um, that was kind of like let's see how we can do it, and we were hugely chuffed that the kind of local population were, were prepared to give us a go um, yeah. and then the last lot that we did we decided to theme around VE Day because the house has this gorgeous Second World War history story and um, it was a house for pardon me it was a house for evacuees from London um, and it was a Dr Bernardo's house and um, for girls again just the, the historic uh, kind of echo that now being a, a, a library of, of early women's yeah. literature is fantastic. There's this beautiful story about the, the girls being taught at Chawton Primary School and reading The Secret Garden and oh, going, my favorite. Oh, we've got our own secret garden, yeah. that's Edward's walled garden. Yeah. Um, but that we put in those tea boxes a little pamphlet about the history of, of Chawton House and uh, in the Second World War and some wartime recipes that we'd, we'd use for the tea boxes. And I think that it's just it's it's still using the collection and the story of the house, but just thinking as creatively as possible, how many ways can we do Can we do this? How many different ways can we look at this? Mm -hmm. um, and at the moment, that's a really practical suggestion because there's such a narrow um, array of things that we are actually able yes. and allowed to by law to do. But yeah. I think in 18 months, two years time, when life has a has more of a semblance of, of normality, that we will take some of these and go, actually, that took us to an audience that couldn't cross our threshold and um, for whatever reason. Um, and, you know, we're a, a big house at the top of a very long drive in a, in a very beautiful part of, of Hampshire. Um, and for some people, that's um, Again, that might be quite intimidating. I know certainly if, like, when I was younger, I would have found that that quite intimidating. Yeah. Um, and so we're finding all sorts of, of ways to um, to use this time to get to to be able to get to an audience that now can't get to us. So we've got to learn how to get to that audience and effectively shorten the distance to our front door for the time that we can reopen it. Um, and that people know how, know what we are, know where we are and know that they're enormously welcome to come back. Mm -hmm. It is. And I think you're absolutely right. That sense of creativity that it sparked. Um, 
exciting. Um, and looking at innovating and using collections and connecting people with collections and increasing audiences. Yeah, it's it's it's, it's exciting, even in the midst of In the moment, taking something that, something that is truly yeah, terrifying. Yeah, and taking that time to stop and go, actually, you know, this is important. These things really do matter and they are important. But yeah, it's, yeah. it's a challenge, but a good, a, that's a positive challenge, I think. I think so. Um, now, before we wrap up, um, yeah. I said that I've been reading quite a bit during the, the lockdown. Um, what, what, what's been keeping you entertained? Mansfield Park. Mansfield Park. I do have a point. You've got them to hand. I did. I prepared. So Katie sent me the quite sent me some things in advance. So I did. <laughs> you see, I, so, I, I sent this question in advance, and my books are on the other side of this table that I'm on. <laughs> no, I had these. I did have them to hand. So, um. A few things I've been reading, mostly the things I've been reading because um, there's things you can dip in and out of. Little yeah. I don't I don't know about everybody else, but actually having only really attention span at the moment to sit because there's so many things whirring around sitting exactly, down. Exactly. Yes. Yeah. I'm finding it a bit challenging. So um, so I've been rereading this, actually. I think it's going to come up the wrong way around because it always is the wrong way around, which is so this is Meetings with Remarkable Manuscripts by Christopher D. Hamill, I think, um, and it's history. And it's ten manuscripts and their history and their story, and it's really, really fascinating. Um, early medieval manuscripts, and my bookmark is this rather fabulous postcard from the Rijksmuseum. <laughs> fabulous! So I've been reading that. I've also been dipping in and out of this, which is how the world thinks, um, which is looking at philosoph philosophy from around the world and is really, really interesting. Um, looking at how different cultures approach time and particularly it's um, sort of cha challenging that sort of some of the ideas around oriental orientalism and occidentalism and actually looking at the different approaches and philosophical approaches. And my bookmark in that is from the Museum of English Rural Life. Uh, so that's Excellent that. museum. My treat, um, which I think is up there, is up there with Jane. Is the world of Jeeves. Oh, <laughs> so I uh, read a bit of Jeeves and Worcester now. No, when, when can, can you? you? So um, yes, my sort of Sunday morning picking it up when we're having a lazy lion. I have been turning to a bit of Jeeves and Worcester. So uh, well, I, that's my reading part moment. That's that's perfectly as well as all of these for work. It's <laughs> 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 my pleasure. <laughs> well, mine have been. I've started Hazel Jones's book, um, The Other oh. Night Boys. Yeah. Uh, which uh, it starts with Edward, but is um, is all about the Knight brothers, which is a great com uh, compendium book to Sophia Hillen's book about the sisters, uh, May Lou and Cass. Mm. Beautifully um, written. That's actually available in the uh, online shop at Chorlton. Um, but this one is and Sharon Wright was on Saturday's um, uh, day for the literary festival um, but I read this is the book that I took when I knew I wouldn't be able to go back into Chorton very reg very regularly because I don't live as close to Chorton as you do um, I, I was like which book will I take with me from the shop and I took uh, Blue Mania Bell oh that looks so um, cool which is the lost history of the Lady Aeronauts and uh, we, Sharon and I did an interview yesterday and it is, this book is, is inspirational and it's also extremely funny in places. Um, but this yeah. really is a, a fantastic proper lost female history um, of the 18th and 19th century. Um, so I heartily recommend uh, that <laughs> one. Um, You've inspired me to read maybe a bit of a bit of Jews and Worcester, but I've also read Square Haunting, which is not really to do with work, which is the Francesca Wade book about um, Bloomsbury um, and five women who lived in Bloomsbury in the same the same street in Bloomsbury. Um, but it's yeah, I love that idea of the kind of how does geography play in with um, how a, how somebody thought and and their actions and things like that. It's all into war, uh, into war women's writing. Um, and another great time of women's writing is the, which is a different to all women's writing is just. Yeah. Yes, yes, um, yeah. I think that's a whole a whole different discussion. Deeply inspired uh, by our time period as well, though, so it works. True, 
true um and you can actually say it's about mecklenburg square and you can find that on the london map in um oh, and you can find where it is and the square was built just after the london map in uh Chawton house was um, was produced lizzie yeah. it's been lovely to chat to you and um, you. <laughs> and i do hope that very soon we will be both properly back in in our houses yeah um, and able to to kind of take up all of the the, the kind of plans and ideas that, that we meant to do in 2020 um, but no, it's been a pleasure to talk to you and thanks for being part of the Literary Festival. Oh, you're welcome. Thank you. Thank you for having me.